Hi, I'm Monica, and I'd like to show you how to work with the iSuite i9 parametry software. In this session, I'd like to show you how you can run a static examination with your Octopus 900 parameter. First, enter a new patient or select an existing patient. Then, press onto the parametry icon to start the examination. In parametric testing, it's important that the patient can see the fixation target clearly. That's why a refractive trial lens may be necessary. To determine the adequate lens, enter the patient's far distance refraction. Then select the eye to be examined. You can either choose the left or the right eye, or you can choose binocular testing for testing both eyes at the same time. Let's start with the left eye here. If necessary, the software automatically proposes a trial lens that takes both the patient's far distance refraction and the patient's age-related correction into account. Select this trial lens. It's important to use thin rim trial lenses to avoid lens rim artifacts in the visual field results. Then move the trial lens holder up, either within the software or directly on your Octopus device. Place the trial lens or lenses into the trial lens holder. If a cylindrical lens is necessary, use the markings on the trial lens holder to correctly set the axis of the cylindrical lens. Once the trial lens is properly positioned, click Next. Choose now the examination you want to perform from your static examinations list. You can customize this list to your liking, which is explained in another video. Here, I choose my glaucoma as an examination. Position the patient comfortably in a straight upright position on a height adjustable chair. Adjust table height if necessary and provide the patient response button to the patient. Ask the patient to perform a number of clicks to become familiar with the mechanics of the response button. For monocular testing, cover the patient's eye that's not being tested with a translucent eye patch. Then ask the patient to get as close to the device as possible with a straight back and place the chin on the chin rest and the head onto the headrest. Use the right side of the chin rest for testing the left eye and the other way around. Check the patient positioning in the video monitor. The perfect position is achieved when the pupil is in the center of the monitor and when the trial lens is as close to the eye as possible without touching it. If necessary, adjust the pupil position by moving the head and the chin rest and adjust the trial lens position by moving the trial lens holder. Now it's time to instruct the patient. Optionally, you can use the patient's instructions provided in several languages in your octopus perimeter. For some patients, it may be helpful to adjust one of the following options. You can alter the level of fixation control used, which is the mechanism that automatically monitors pupil position and interrupts the test upon fixation loss. It is recommended to keep this on the MET setting, but some patients have such unsteady pupil that with the mechanism on, it's impossible to test them. Then it's recommended to turn to the minimum setting or, if needed, to turn it off. You may also change the stimulus interval, which is the time between two stimuli presented. 
the adaptive setting is recommended for most patients because it automatically adapts the speed of stimulus presentation to the patient's response time. However, for some patients this is too fast and then the slow setting is a better option. For patients having trouble seeing the fixation target, you may also alter the fixation target to a central point or to a larger ring target, which is helpful for people with foveal defects who don't see the other two targets. For those patients, you may also increase the fixation target intensity so they are able to see the fixation target clearly. Else, it's not recommended to change the fixation target intensity. Optionally, you may also comment on your observations regarding the patient. Once the patient's properly positioned and all the settings are properly defined, confirm the examination parameters and start the examination. Monitor patient performance throughout the test by watching the patient's eye in the video monitor. If needed, you can always pause the test talk to the patient and offer re-instructions and restart once you feel the patient's ready to perform the test again. Monitor also the false positives and the false negatives which are an indicator of patient reliability. If they are displayed in green color it means the patient's performing the test reliably. Orange color means the patient behavior is suspicious and red color indicates the potentially unreliable visual field. If you see orange color, you may pause the test and offer re-instructions. And if you see red color, you may even want to discard the test and start all over again. Once the examination is finished, it's automatically saved and you can preview the results. You can choose from a number of different views, including a review of the reliability indicators to make sure that this specific visual field test has been reliable. Then you can choose one of the following next steps. You can test the other eye with the exact same test conditions. You can print the results. You can show the results to look at them in more detail. You can continue testing with additional test parameters on the same eye or you can exit the examination and get back to the patient manager. I hope you enjoyed this training and found it useful.